Uh, hi. Um, I'm gonna be putting out a updated Scream Killers ranking, like I said, but I have such a bad history with that video, because before I uploaded the one you saw that was inaccurate, I had already filmed it like four times and had to delete those for various reasons, and I had to edit a lot of them several times, and I have to, had to edit this one more than once already. But it's coming in two parts, like this. This came in two parts just because I didn't have enough footage to uh, continue filming the day I was did the first half, which is why I'm not wearing the same outfit. It's nighttime. Uh, that chair's gone, and so now the TV's over there instead of over there. So now this chair's facing this way. A whole lot's been going on, but I wanted to finish my wrong turn villains ranked. Because I it cut out, like, a little over halfway through. Actually, exactly halfway through, because half of 50, uh, 35 is 17.5, and I left off at 16. So that makes sense, uh, especially given that if I left off at 17, it would have been after Young one Eye and Sawtooth, but not Young Three Fingers. So I think I left off at just the right time, and I didn't even plan that. The phone just would not record anymore. So that's fun. Um, I mean, it wasn't then, but... The other wrong turn videos I filmed have all gone on my friend's laptop until I can finish the scream video that's happening. And then after that, I'm done editing that scream video, which I already told you is a long story there. Um, I can finally edit those wrong turn movies and start filming my Texas Chainsaw Massacre videos. I, I already filmed one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre videos with a friend of mine from Ter Terrific Reviews. It's going to post on both channels. It's going to be his Texas Chainsaw Massacre ranking and my Texas Chainsaw Massacre ranking. And it's going to be pretty fun. It's not going to be the same format as my usual rankings, because he's got a more concise system than my free form. But it will be, nonetheless, very fun. I highly recommend you check that out. Without further ado, I'm going to pop into this list, because this is why I'm here. I don't know. At number 15, which is where we left off, and number 15 is Venable, played by Bill Sage, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, yes, he is the last of the characters from the movie from 2021 to be on this list, so he's the best of those villains. He's their leader, he carries a lot of the weight of what's going on, is like mostly his decision, like yes, the townsfolk is definitely going along with this, but like, however he got his power, either way, like, it doesn't matter. He is in charge of what's going on. Obviously, he's not in charge, like, he's not the idea man behind the systems that were set in place because they've been around fucking since before the Civil War. The Civil War comes up a lot in that seventh movie. It come up, came up again in the sixth movie, and I didn't realize it until recently when I... Uh, they list off three presidents that stayed in the resort, and I uh, didn't realize who one of them was ever. And then recently was looked it up and saw that it was the president of the Confederacy. I'm like, what the fuck? But that's a side thing. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that don't know that guy's name either. But anyway, Venable, totally different dude. Um, their systems aren't, like, if you cut out, like, everything that they do to people that they find guilty of anything, and the whole trapped aspect, it seems like a fine society. Like, once you add that stuff in, they're clearly evil, and they, like, they need to be dealt with, <laughs> but that's a sequel that should happen, like... The original idea for a sequel for the original was a bunch of cops swarming in and attacking the mutants, and they didn't do that. Like, 3 kind of did something kind of similar, but not really. I think that they should have, like, the cops and the SWAT and the, or whatever attack this town, but it's very unlikely that that's the route they will go with that. Not the town, but, like, the specific village of them. But, yeah, Venable... I love his speech about, like, who's more barbaric. I mean, at that point in the movie, it's arguable. And then when you get to the 
darkness and what that is and what's allowed to happen to them, it's like, okay, well, you're more barbaric, clearly. And plus, you just put a bunch of fatal traps up in the woods for people to walk into as a warning when you could have just got a no trespassing sign. You know, that would have worked just as well. You know, I, I don't know. That seems really... These characters are pretty vile. Uh, I like the mutants overall more than I like the Foundation. I don't think that they were terrible villains. Uh, I don't think it was a disgrace to the franchise. Maybe someone did, but... I thought they were serviceable. But he doesn't really land higher than 15. At number 14, we have Jackson. Played by Chris Jarvis. He's one of the caretakers from uh, The Last Resort. And unlike with Maynard... When he when Jackson is talking to the boys and like trying to like reason with them, tell them what to do a little bit, it doesn't come off as he doesn't like assault them first of all, and it's not like that demeaning as demeaning as it was with Maynard and like there's a lot more uh, likable aspects of him, like the whole like tr training Danny on hunting and shit and like that speech about like the different types of blood in the animals. Like, I didn't know that shit, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it makes you think that this movie probably put care into, like, uh, what color of blood came out of what wound, if they are putting that in the script. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought he was a very good villain. I like that he dies, because, like, he is a, not a great human. None of them are. <laughs> but, I mean, Ruthie, but... Of, like, the first six movies, none of them are really great humans. But the the whole, like, incest porn of aspect of this movie is off-putting. Uh, lessens his character, but not enough to make him in the lower half of the movies. Like, I think that most of the big issues I have with Six is the way that the mutants are not as good as the other villains that are just introduced in this movie. And they're downplayed so much and just because I don't like that that happened doesn't mean I don't like the characters that did get the focus and it's weird because at first viewing like I liked some kills and I hated the rest of the movie and then because I'm such a diehard fan I would never skip any of them marathoning them and over time it grew on me and it pumped up quite a bit in the movie ranking which hasn't come out yet but I did film that already moving on to number 13 is Danny, played by Anthony Illett, is the main character of the sixth movie, and he's kind of just copy and paste the script of Texas Chainsaw 3D. He's Heather, only without the ridiculous age gap, because they're not tying this to a direct movie. Um, I thought he was a, a interesting character. I think that him, but tr like not giving a fuck that all of his friends died, uh, and joining them while it is a betrayal it just makes more sense than Darius or even arguably it makes more sense than Heather in Texas 3D just because he was shown the whole time to be crazy and like he's taking these pills and then he stops taking them and then he's drugged which always will like bring out what like it was a hallucinogenic so it just turns you up a lot so whatever was fucked up with him came out so he was not good <laughs> and I don't know and all his friends he just seemed detached from them anyway I mean he was only really friends with Vic and everyone else was there because they were friends with one of uh Tony's brother's friends <laughs> or, or like you know what I mean and Brian and Jillian were more directly tied to Danny but they owed like they were douchebags that were owed money I don't know overall likable and I could like totally buy the acting which like if you're gonna label this a porn parody the acting is better than you would usually see in one of those but number 12 same thing because it's Sally from the same movie played by Sadie Katz and I mean she's just a porn star just put in the movie I mean I don't know if she's actually a porn star I didn't look her up on uh, IMDb or Pornhub or anything, so I don't really know, but I wouldn't be surprised. 
and that she's a vile woman, but at the same time, really fun to watch be a vile woman. I think it's really hilarious how crazy she gets towards the third act when she's just screaming at her. I think it's totally fucking brutal that she like gets her face melted and her leg blown off. I think that was justified. It's just better than the other two of the three introduced in this movie. But I can't really put her any higher than that because the movie is just ridiculous. If like I said that she wasn't hot because she's hot and that's part of why she's up this high and she's mainly doing sexual things. So that plays a part in it, but at the same time, it's dragged down a lot by the whole plot line and how they use that. It's between numbers 12 and 11 is, I'm not going to say monumental, but damn near, maybe? I don't know. Like, no insult in the life of me put anyone below this line in the same part with these people. I mean, I guess, obviously, I'm putting five people, or four people with these people in the video, but I didn't, like I say, plan this. Um, yes. Is one eye from the fourth movie, played by Daniel Skeen. And I love the fourth movie and how it brings back one eye and Sawtooth. I think one eye isn't really exactly like he was in the original movie, but I do like this version of one eye, even if it's completely different. Uh, obviously, he's this high on the list. He's more vicious and way more smart than one eye was. He's about as smart as the other two were in that movie. Never my favorite of the original three villains, but I do think that you can't do a movie with just Sawtooth and Three Finger. You gotta have one eye in there, you know? It's really, it's if this is the only one eye besides the original to make it this high, which, you know, says a lot given that there are three other actors that played one eye. Four, uh, particularly one eye, were a little bit more vicious. Maybe they were more, maybe they weren't more vicious than Three Finger and Sawtooth, but this one eye is definitely more vicious. He does snag a kill of his own in this movie, which he did not kill anyone in the first movie. Uh, he was more there as, like, the kid to their fucked up Papa Bear, Mama Bear, uh, Baby Bear dynamic. He's certainly, they're not using that dynamic, uh, <laughs> but I would say it doesn't matter that much because they're already very detached from that, from Three's uh, utilization, so I think that it was fine. I definitely enjoyed it. His kill of Bridget, like, I think that that was a great idea. I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been, but I do love the snow does this isn't the kills rank though i mean that's a, i've already talked about that in a video but that's coming as well at some point 10 wrong turn killers and i'll admit there's not really 10 killers left because there's so many portrayals of three finger left and more than one portrayal of sawtooth left but <clears throat> number 10 is the original one eye played by ted clark this version of one eye is the best version of one eye I think that the original movie is a damn, it is a fucking classic. Like, in 30 years, people will look back in this era of horror and they will point at the first two wrong turns as good. Already are, but I'm just saying. It isn't as good as it should be. And I think that will change once, like, my generation has their kids reach an age where they can watch wrong turns at 10 and I watched other movies that were arguably more gruesome at 3 so it's neither here nor there so whatever you decide but that's not the point of this video yeah one eye he does have the mind of a child and it is very clear that he's the only one that does because they're just way too good at the planning and shit and three finger is just crazy whereas one eye is deficient and sawtooth seems to be pretty he's the, the straight man which I like that dynamic of them, and I think that One Eye is just perfectly goofy and, like, creepy at the same time. And then they don't overuse him. Didn't get a kill until the second viewing. That it clearly didn't matter that much. 
I don't know, one eye love slit Jesse's throat. I think that was very, uh, done extremely creepily, like the way he was using that knife. It was very classic. Like, it reminded me of, like, a black and white movie. Not one in particular, but just, like, you know what I mean. And I, I, I think this movie would work in black and white, now that I think about it. I don't know. Play well in black and white. But then you got him as the first one to get ran over, and then he blows up. And everyone else gets an extended fight scene and more kills. And that's why he's not in the top nine. Above the other one, I just because that one I got kills. But I'm basing this more on just the impact of the character, and gotta say, he's better in this movie. Sawtooth from the fourth movie who also played the orderly that got his neck bitten out by young Sawtooth in that movie. Really fun tidbit. I think that he nails Sawtooth in the original. He's not as good as Sawtooth in the original, obviously, but he's pretty close. I think that uh, of all of them, I think that he probably got the closest of to the character that he was actually portraying. A kid three finger, but I wasn't really talking about them. Pre-log taking him down. I don't know. I love this performance in this movie. He gets that fucking uh, ice fishing drill through the back and out the chest. Amazing. I just remember that I have to text someone about a auger kill. Uh, I also the great sawtooth. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, well, I thought that was really neat. Uh, I loved just seeing him again because, like, Saw 2, but even in 3, I missed Saw 2 and 1-Eye, and then when I watched 2, I was like, oh, they're not in that one either, and so I was like, I'm really glad that they're in this one. And of course, they're in 5 and 6, but I don't like them in 5 and 6 because, well, I already gone into that in the other video, but I don't know. This Saw 2 seems like the best since the original. Um fuck up the mutants. Well, I mean, like, they did add in that they were immune to pain and that they killed their family members, which does lessen their character, and that their injuries were more self-inflicted than they were implied to be in the original. But performance-wise, they did not fuck up the mutants. Even though One-Eye is not the same, I think that it was... Maybe it's not as good as I remember. <laughs> Three finger from Wrong Turn Four. Skeet. Wait, no, he's not. He's not. And I think he does a great job as uh, both characters he plays. He plays Vincent as well. The and the guy that's like that's take anything he did as Vincent into account for this ranking. Uh, three finger. I think that he nailed it. I think that uh, it was good. It wasn't the best three finger, but it wasn't the worst three finger. I mean, manic and viciously creepy like you don't quite know what he's gonna do with you but you know it's gonna be fucked up and you know he's gonna love it i didn't get that much of that vibe with him in this movie but i did enjoy him as just the insert killer here and he's the uh, skin of a character that i really love it's kind of a problem with the movie i think that sawtooth was already so just brooding and like uh, the silent, like, stalker killer in, in heart anyway. Um, so the archetype used that way in Forge seems less of a dis, like, a detach. With One Eye and Three Finger, it does seem like more of a detach, but I still love Three Finger so much, because, like, he is giddy. He is, uh, the, he is embodying the character, but he doesn't really have the, uh, that viciousness or creepy eeriness that I'm talking about that comes out of Three Finger in some of the other movies. Like, I don't know. This Three Finger. I mean, obviously, I love these. So, you know that this Three Finger didn't piss me off or anything. Like I said, the only thing that they did that pissed me off was all the exposition in the beginning that seemed retconny to me. Played by Clint Carlton. Just perfectly weird and creepy. I will say I love the choice to have him wearing 
a shirt of one of the victims from the original movie. If you can tell, that Scott shirt, the blood stains in the same place. I think it's aged probably appropriately. I don't know how far it's set, but it's four years and it's not like perfectly red. Um, it is the same yellow button-up shirt. Obviously, he's wearing stuff on top of that. I think it's really hilarious that he jerks off at one point in this movie. I do love the kill that he gets where uh, he has that sweet moment with Pa where they're like sh having that bonding hunting moment. Only it's two humans and they're having their uh, arc complete of their growing to be like family with uh, Jake and Nina as well. And they're having, but they're closer obviously and having that final moment with them. Just that whole scene was very, I don't know, I love that scene. I, the fact that brother and sister are fucking in the scene, I mean, that's just perfectly gross and weird and creepy. And then it leads to a great fight scene. But brother does get incapacitated pretty quick. Uh, he does... <laughs> I was going to say he snags half of the kill in the first... Uh, or in the first scene. <laughs> and that is true. Uh, as far as picking them up. But I meant, like, he gets the first... Uh, lips. And then Three Finger does the other blow. And then he pulls it up. They, they pull the halves with them. God. I love the second movie. Obviously, it is great. Um, he's not as good as his sister or father, though, just because they do so much more cool shit. Brother's more of just, like... If, like, you and him see each other, you're gonna die, but he doesn't really bother to seek you out. He'll watch you and jerk off and just laugh at what dumb shit you're saying or doing, but that's more his style. And, like, he's very, like, attached to the females that they encounter in a way that I don't like. <laughs> but at the same time, he doesn't go that edge over and it's mainly just torture like he shoves uh neil the dead camera guy which is who they're with their indian cuisine because he's indian which i thought was just wow that's that's fun uh but i never thought of cannibalizing people and eating them in the foods from the country of their ethnicity i can't tell if that's right because you enjoy their cuisine i don't know but anyway <laughs> Uh, the whole camera bit, it was like, wow. Because you know what he's going to do with that footage. And so it just, it's like a whole other level of creepy. And that's something I can say about that second movie right now. Is that there's just a whole other level of creepy in several of these killers that I really enjoy. Betraying this type of like, he's kind of like one eye, but more intelligent. And he's just less violent because he's more laid back. And I think that's really fun. And I think that his kills are also very fun. Of course, killing Amber and Jen, too. Say Three Finger just because he was with the clothesline that had their shirts on it at the end. I don't know. A little bit more kills in that movie. Sister, played by Rorley Teo. Uh, again, I, I already basically went into, like, I love their scenes together, because I think that they play off each other very well. She's obviously the more intelligent and more vicious of the two. Like, she has a temper, and she also has a creepy laugh. <laughs> and I think the whole idea that they were, like, teenagers just makes it a whole lit, lot more creepier, because, like, uh, I highly doubt any of these characters had time growing up in a normal society, but you'd know for sure that these two didn't, so they don't have any basis of, like, you talking them into any kind of a conversation. You don't really get that with any of them, but just the idea that that's more for sure with these two. And I do think that she is, her anger does make her a little bit more frightening, and just her viciousness. Like, Elena's kill is super awesome, mostly just because of how vicious it is. Like really, it's it's intense, but it's also fun just because she add, she relieves the tension with her creepy laugh. And then, like, as as much as that would relieve the tension, but uh, 
that like uh, Nina, and then she just click. <laughs> and I love Nina's reaction. It's like fuck you. And she gets hit. Like I don't know. I love the mutants in the second movie. I think the sister is definitely uh, top tier of the villains. I would say a few of this list, but uh, yeah, no, most of which are three fingers. <laughs> Wrong Turn 3, Left 4 Dead, and Wrong Turn 5, Bloodlines. Same actor, so I'm looping them together. Borislav Ila, or fuck. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, yeah, no, great three finger. He obviously got to play him more than once, so he fleshed him out a bit more. We saw him when he was on his own, and his dynamic with the brothers and Maynard. Um, I just wish that we got to see his dynamic with the brothers and not Maynard. Uh, he's... I gotta say he's more creepier than the other three fingers just because there's an added sexual element that wasn't in any of the other movies because even when they kidnap Jesse in the first movie it's very clear that when Sawtooth gestures to her and one eye goes over there that he's gonna kill her not do anything else so that was really added in the third movie and then further uh, exploited in the f ending of the fifth movie and I hate that aspect of it if I'm removing that then his performance of Three Finger is exactly what it should be for this type of movie. It's very grimy, eerie, and creepy, and that's kind of the intent. I've even though I don't like the makeup on Sawtooth and Five at all, but. And I do think that, yeah, he is lower than uh, the other four just because of that added sexual element of it that I really hate. I don't think they needed to add. I have a reason to extend uh, Alex's lifespan so Nate can rescue her, but at this point I really don't care about either of their characters, and I, even then I don't want to see that, so... Luckily, they don't actually show it in any of these movies, which is great. Uh, I did have to watch the Hills Have Eyes movies right before this, so... I was relieved that it wasn't on screen in the wrong turns, even though I already knew they weren't. <laughs> then I want... That's coming, too. Freefinger. This would be Jeff Scrutton from Wrong Turn 2. The fact that they couldn't get Richings back, it was a very sad for me. But I will say that this Jeff did a serviceable job. Obviously, he's my second favorite. Three Finger, he's number four on my list. Great job. He, but in slightly different ways, he seems like he's going to have a lot of fun with what he's doing, which is an aspect I loved in the first movie. I'll, I'll say he's a little bit taking it less seriously. I mean, not the actor. The actor didn't take it less seriously. I'm saying the character was taking the situation less seriously than they were in the first movie. And differences. Uh, I think that a big part of why he's lower is utilization, because he is a side character to these other mutants. But at the same time, it's natural and they fit together well as like a family he's just he lived with one eye and sawtooth they're dead these four live in this house and he now lives in another house so it just it all works out you know one like having uh the old timer become the father figure i mean even though like it kind of is contradicting because in the first movie he doesn't seem like he's on their side and even in the second movie, they have a contradiction where he's like, I've never seen anyone come out, but like, at the end of the first movie, he did. Maybe, it's probably just to lower uh, Dale's, uh, like, is less likely to succeed, maybe is why he said that. So, I'm not gonna, like, say that's a big thing, but like, and it also doesn't really have a lot to do with Three Finger in this movie, but like it kind of does, because I'm just talking about like the whole overall thing. Like Now we know the, who his father is, and now we know the rest of his family, and what their whole dynamic is like in other scenes, because in the first movie we don't really see them have dinner. We see just like the start of carving up the meal. 
So in this movie to actually have the full extended view of what the family is like on a day to day basis is a lot more fun and interesting, but it's not as unsettling because less is more. Because in the first movie they're more utilized like a humanized and it's more of like a seems more like a true story kind of a deal. wiped out at a certain point in the movie and then just comes back at the end to be alive because he's the title character it does highly affect his placement in that he's not in my top two he's in my top four also i will give high praise because he's the only three finger in any of the sequels or prequels to have the right fucking fingers three through six he's got these and one and two he's got these and these were melded together like this, and in f three onward, they were just kind of covered up, and in four, they said he, that he bit them off. So it's always been wrong after three. And I understand that now that Sawtooth's dead and Three Fingers using the bow and arrow, that it makes more sense to use these than it does to try and fucking, you can't do that. But you could have had him holding it with the, I don't, uh, I'm not, I, I get the change, I just, it, it's continuity. Continuity, schmontinuity, I don't know. But, yeah. I don't know how much of a... I will say, I just love the creepiness of him. Like, when he's barking at Henry Rollins. The scalping of Neil and then wearing a scalp. He's fun. The top three are... Great. Iconic, iconic, iconic. Um... You may be surprised to hear that my number three is the original Sawtooth. Played by Gary Wright. Fucking phenomenal job. Love this character. I love the, the whole dynamic between these three characters in the original film. Like, you got one eye who's just, like, the... He's mentally deficient. He's the underling. He's just kind of enjoying the ride. And he's there to make sure, like, if there's three of them, like, set out and... You know, they are all trying to, like, run away, then it's better to have three than two, obviously. And he's just eerie. But then you get to th Sawtooth, and Sawtooth is just a lumbering mass, and he's a sharpshooter. He's got great fucking aim with an arrow and a shotgun, so, like, you're pretty much fucked no matter what happens. And, I don't know, I just fucking love him. He's just... He's that perfect counterbalance to Three Finger while he's like the manic, crazy fucking <laughs> all over the place. Sawtooth is very stationary and very like timing it out and like precise with his shots. So like even though you're probably going to outrun him, you won't outrun his ammo. I don't know. I think it's great. Oh, and Sawtooth is the main focus there he is the like the center like if you were gonna do a like a movie poster of the original movie that had the mutants on it which you wouldn't do because you gotta like hide them until like you reveal them slowly through the movie but if you were gonna do that for like a real release then it would be sawtooth and then one eye and then three finger and then probably like smaller than them it would be chris and everyone else sawtooth is great He's very iconic, and I didn't miss him in 2 and 3, and I was so glad that they brought him back in 4 and continued him, even though they kind of ruined him in 5 and 6, but whatever. I wouldn't say fail. I mean, design, acting, just the, the, the way that they're utilized in that movie where, like, he's very, like, whenever he's in eyeline, you know that you are fucked if you're not moving. And that is great. And one killer that's very good at large distances, and I think that that definitely adds to the movie. What you want to deal with? When, uh, one eye being the first one I'd want to deal with, because he's not as, he doesn't get any kills in this movie. But, uh, and he's not as smart as 
three finger and sawtooth are. So just all of that. But yeah, he, him being the one I would least want to fuck with definitely heightens him up. Uh, not above three finger just because he's he's three finger. Come on now, I'll get into that in a, a while. But oh, and then of course when I popped in wrong turn two on my twelfth birthday, well. The sun came up when I finished watching it, so it was more, uh, like, 3 a.m. at April 14th, but the night was my birthday, and it kind of shifted over, but whatever, and I watched Wrong Turn 2, and I saw, first of all, I saw Texas Battle, and I was like, yes, because I'm a Final Destination 3 fan, I mean, I'm a Final Destination fan in general, but... And then I saw another actress from that movie, which I was like, okay, cool. Henry Rollins, I had heard a lot of his music, uh, but I had not recognized him until I saw his face. And then I was like, oh! But uh, what really kicked my gear up when I was just looking at names was Ken Kersinger. Because Freddy vs. Jason is my childhood. I saw that shit at three. So I was like, fuck yes! And I, I have no idea how much of that plays into this, but I think that his performance in this movie is great, phenomenal. He he does a good job. I think that uh, first movie and they weren't if they aren't going to use three finger, which I still think they could use a little bit more three finger, but it honestly does not drag the movie down any in that ranking. Which I'm going to not say what movie lands where, just because. Uh, you know, that video is not out yet. Good job there, given uh, what the directions were. Uh, because he's just, he's like a fast, vicious, psycho cannibal. I mean, I fucking love it when uh, he's like, shit. <laughs> like, because Jake says shit. And it's just, like, moments like that, like, certainly heighten him. I mean, like, he's just, like, when he's just sitting there with his drink, watching his teen, like, record with a chick, it's just like, and, like, ah, oh, God, watching TV and, like, like, the whole, like, saying grace, the whole, like, dynamics of the family in this movie are just top-notch. I mean, he's such a badass he gets the, like, kill of the first character that we are like, whoa, when she dies, Mara, with the axe. And that was, like, the first time a story cam was used. And it was just... There's so much great shit with this character. He's kind of like Sawtooth. Certainly intimidating, and just, like, the whole, like... I just love the way that it was played of, like... He's just hunting. Like, this is just hunting to him. And he does get off and have a joy of, like, causing them pain and distress. I don't know. There's just something about it that I really love. Also, like I said, I love that scene with the arrow, and he's just like... That was great. I love it when he's chasing Nina, and then he just can't find her. He's like, ah, shit. Or I think he might have said fuck. I don't remember, but... That is just, it's just such a great movie. Original played by Julian Richings. If you don't know who that is, plays Death and Supernatural. This guy is, Three Finger is so good in this movie. I mean, the utilization, the laugh, immediately became iconic from the first frame. And if it wasn't iconic to you then, it was definitely by the end of the movie when he kills the, the last cop. I mean, even I was like, oh my god, this is top five laughs in horror. And by this point in my life, I would say it's top three behind Freddy and Chucky. And of course you got, hoo -hoo -hoo. you know, that's neither here nor there. I mean, I just, like, Three Finger is so iconic. Like, the way he's utilized in this movie, like... You see just enough of him to get the idea, and, like, he's just very swift and crazy and giddy, and he just 
creepy. And, like, just the whole, like, they look like they haven't cleaned their skin in years. And the whole griminess of the house, and just the way that makes you reflect on their characters, and, like, his, like, fucking, like, sharp-looking-ass, serrated-ass-looking, rusty-ass fucking knife. And, God, it gets, like, the best kill of the movie with the axe, and, like, and she's just, like... That was phenomenal. God, there's just... I can't say enough great things about Three Finger. He is the best character... Of the well, he might not be the best character of the franchise, but he's definitely the best villain of the franchise. Come on now, but you know, I'm not gonna rank all it, and it won't be for a while. I'm just not planning on doing that. This list was already hard enough, and everyone on it would be on it again, and that would be annoying. So, yeah, this is the top of the list because come on it had to be he's just played so well i mean when he's in the tree and just being creepy with her like you can definitely tell like he's got a thought process that's very planned out and like you know that he's like part of him's probably thinking about how he's gonna eat you and that scene in particular he's probably thinking like like why like uh you called me here i am what are you gonna do which is great because he's then whacked off a tree <laughs> i said whacked off I don't know, I just really love this character. I can't really put too much into words the extent to, like, how much iconic I think this character is and how greatly he's played in this movie. He's just that perfect, eerie, under-your-skin, like... But at the same time, being a personality that you really love while also being that silent killer, well, besides the laugh, he never didn't say anything it all just perfectly blends together and like i don't know he's just he's such an icon like he's the face of the franchise for a reason there's a reason that he came back in all the sequels aside from just coming up at the end of that movie and you know that's probably why they brought him back at the end of that movie just because they knew they needed if they were going to have a sequel they needed three finger if any and they were right none of the movies that out three finger when they killed him in 3 they're like well we have to start before that got us more one-eyed socket performances, which was fine. You know, I love that we got more of them. But they can never do another wrong turn mutant movie without Three Finger. And I think that they should ignore three through six and or have Three Finger fight Victor Crowley. That's what I want. Three Finger versus Victor Crowley. We need this movie. But yeah, Killer's Rank, the other half of those are in another video. Hopefully you watch that first. And uh, like and subscribe and all that bullshit. Watch the Wrong Turn movies if you haven't. If you haven't, why did you watch this? That's ridiculous, but you know, whatever. Um, catch you later.